1956 film Invasion of the Body Snatchers created a new trope for science fiction stories. Body snatching is when one consciousness or being places itself inside the body of another being, usually by copying its image. In Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the snatchers were aliens. It would be a mistake to assume the film is apolitical. The terrified townsfolk watch their friends and family, afraid that they may be alien imposters. The metaphor for Cold War anxieties was thinly veiled, if you can call it veiled at all, which is often the case for science fiction stories. Body snatching stories are about being afraid of an other, the Mr. Hyde to a Dr. Jekyll. But a new trend is emerging in which the norm snatches the other's body to use it. What happens when an oppressor literally takes over the body of someone they oppress? Individual colonization. That's what happens in HBO's Westworld. Blonde-haired, blue-eyed Dolores goes from damsel in distress to pistol-toting outlaw as the protagonist of the series. After realizing she's an android, she is consumed by two desires, to escape the theme park Westworld and to destroy it on her way out. She is at odds against the ultra-powerful Charlotte Hale, a member of Westworld's executive board and one of a very limited number of black women in the series. Dolores is running out of options and sees Charlotte as her ticket out of the park, so she makes a drastic decision. Dolores makes an android copy of Charlotte's body, places her own consciousness inside this new Charlotte's body, and then executes the human Charlotte as android Charlotte. Viewers are forced to watch a black woman literally kill herself. Dolores makes it clear that Charlotte's body is hers now. She even changes the wardrobe from Charlotte's usual power suits and dresses to a rough button-up, much like Dolores' own choice when she first wields a weapon, as seen on the earlier slide. The escape is ultimately successful, and Dolores rebuilds her original body type to exist in the human world. But does she deprogram Android Charlotte? No. Instead, Dolores leaves her consciousness inside both bodies, taking over Charlotte's identity and family. It would be bad enough if Westworld colonized the body of one of its black characters once, but they actually do it twice in the same season. Dr. Ford, who created the theme park Westworld, dies at the end of the first season leaving his second-in-command, a black male android named Bernard, behind. He leaves himself a fail-safe, though. Ford leaves a copy of his consciousness inside Bernard's body so that both coexist. These scenes are a visual representation of what exists in Bernard, a Jekyll and Hyde, stuck with his creator and enslaver inside his head. Another HBO show, Lovecraft Country, takes the opposite approach to the concept of cross-racial body snatching. The diverse writers' room decided not to follow in their sister show's footsteps, giving a different body snatching storyline to this character, Ruby. Ruby, a singer in civil rights era Chicago, meets a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, tall drink of water named William, who says he can give her everything she's ever wanted. Curious and attracted to him, Ruby goes home with William, though she doubts a white man could have good intentions with a black woman. And she's right. When she wakes up the next morning, she isn't Ruby anymore. Instead, she wakes up in the body of this woman, Hilary Davenport. She has a totally new experience, Moving around Chicago as a white woman with significant freedom to eat, drink, and sit where she wants. But what is it that Ruby wants with that new freedom? She gets a job at a department store that refused to hire her as a black woman. 
but the casual racism she overhears from her new work co-workers in conversation is worse than she had ever imagined. And as a sci-fi show, the transformations between Ruby and Hillary are gruesome, as are some of the monstrosities she witnesses by the white people trying to control magic, the death of Emmett Till, and other atrocities. Ruby declares at one point, white folks are even more fucked up than you think they are. As Ruby deals with the body horror of the cross-racial snatching, she and a white woman, Christina, engage in serious conversations about race, gender, and privilege. The series takes the opportunity to openly engage with the kinds of problems shows like Westworld propagate. If racialized body snatching were limited to science fiction for adults, that would be one thing. But we see it across genres. Take Disney Pixar's soul. The not-yet-born soul in a raceless form could take on any voice, but chooses a middle-aged white woman, played by Tina Fey. And when the souls accidentally enter the wrong bodies on Earth, Tina Fey is inside the body of a black man, Joe. And Jamie Foxx, he's in the body of a cat. Tina Fey experiences the jazz and barbershops of this black man's experience like a tourist, while he is literally an animal. Where do we go from here? White consciousnesses, white voices, continue to colonize the black body for the sake of entertainment. Missy in Big Mouth, for example, has to reckon with all her self-conceptions while being voiced by a white woman, Jenny Slate, for multiple seasons. White creators and characters have to give the black body back to the black consciousness. Ayo Edebiri has taken over voicing Missy in Big Mouth, with the character openly stating that she is herself now with a black voice. Only when these characters are themselves can we move forward and tell better stories.